I basically took away all of my excuses for not making sugar cookies. I got rid of the cold butter. I got rid of the, the multi-hour chill in the fridge. I don't even use cookie cutters. I don't use piping bags. I keep it so simple. And we still are gonna make incredibly delicious, very pretty cookies. Hi, welcome back to The Smitten Kitchen. I'm Deb Perlman, and today we are going to make my unfussy sugar cookies. I love a very classic sugar cookie. I want it to taste like butter. I don't. I want it to be sweet, but not excessively so. I want it to have just enough salt in it. I don't want it to be all sugar. It's gotta have a little balance. And then you can add whatever flavorings you want. I go really classic with vanilla extract, but you could use orange oil or lemon zest or almond extract, whatever makes you happy. Let's go, should I tell you what's in it? All-purpose flour, granulated sugar, one cup of cold unsalted butter, some fine sea salt, or kosher salt works too, a little bit of baking powder, vanilla extract, and one large egg. So the first thing I cut out when I started making my own sugar cookies on a regular basis was warming up the butter. If you have a stand mixer or a food processor, you can start with cold butter and make the dough without any advanced planning. If you have a hand mixer, it definitely works better with softened butter, but I have instructions on my site for both, and I'm gonna show you here today how to make it with a food processor. I add one cup of sugar, three cups of flour, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder, and I'm using half a teaspoon of fine sea salt, but if you're using kosher salt, you can just use double. I'm gonna blend these together until they're mixed. And then I'm gonna add the butter. It's diced up, so it mixes in better, but it's totally cold from the fridge. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna start running the machine and we're gonna work this cold butter into the flour and the sugar. And I wanna show you a few stages along the way. And for this step, I am just trying to run it until the butter is no longer in big chunks and it mixes into the kind of sandy mixture you see here. And then, now that the butter is dispersed into the sugar and the flour, I'm gonna add my egg. So here is a point where, with a regular food processor dough recipe, we would often stop, if not sooner. But that's not what we're doing here. We are making a cookie dough. We want everything to be really smooth and buttery. We're looking for the mixture to ball together. And to do that, I'm just gonna break it up. We might need to do this once or twice in the process but we're almost there. And in another like 10 or 20 seconds, it should start rolling over on itself. And then you really have one big ball of cookie dough. And that's it. That's where it's all balled up. And what you see when you pick up the dough, it is not sandy, it is not crumbly, it fully comes together. So we just made this cookie dough in about two minutes and we are gonna roll it out right away. There's no waiting here. I'm gonna roll this out in two parts. So I'm gonna take half the dough at a time. You can totally just eyeball it. I don't even flour my counter when I roll out cookie dough. I roll it out between two pieces of parchment paper and wait till you see how easy it is. So I have these sticks today. You do not need them, but they're really fun if you're rolling out cookies a lot. And what they do is they allow you to keep the height of your cookies even without thinking about it at all. And I am just gonna roll this out. Look how easy it is. There's like no fighting the dough. So I wanna show you a cool thing you can do when you're using parchment like this is right now I'm like, oh no, it's about to fall off the edge of the paper. You can just go like this and move it over. And if any wrinkles form in the paper as I roll it, I usually pull them out, um, although you can do this at the end. And that's just so you don't have big creases in your cookies. It makes them very prone to breaking. Um, hi, how easy was that? We basically have a perfect 3 8 of an inch slab of cookies all ready to cut into whatever shape we want. Because we now have a flat sheet instead of a thick slab of dough, this is gonna chill really quickly. In fact, I'm gonna go slide it onto a cutting board or a baking sheet, and I'm gonna pop it in the freezer, and in probably under 10 minutes, it's gonna be cold enough that I can get really clean cuts for the cookie cutter, even though I haven't chilled it for hours. Hey guys, <laughs> how are you? Uh, nothing. <laughs> when it comes out, it's very solid. What I do is I peel back the first sheet, just like this, but then I put it back on there loosely. 
and I flip, then I peel back the top sheet now. And what this does is it loosens it. So when we cut the cookies against here, it's easier to pick them up. If it was very glued on, we'd be like wedging the pieces off and I don't want to do that. You can use here any cookie cutters you like. You can use Easter cookie cutters. You could use Hanukkah cookie cutters. You can use anything you like. But I want to show you this really cool thing I came up with that allowed me to one, not have any fancy cookie cutters, and two, it doesn't have any scraps that need to be re-rolled. So I am using a ruler, but you absolutely do not have to, and I am going to make marks in this dough that are one and a half inches apart. You don't have to do that size squares. I just find it to be a nice size for like a not too big cookie, but not so small that you immediately need three more. One and a half, one and a half. Then we're gonna go this way, and we're gonna do the same thing, and then, I use my, oh, it's a ravioli wheel, a pastry wheel. I like to use the fluted side so it's a little bit more decorated. And I just go across and back on the dough until we have a nice grid of cookies. So they're all cut. And the cool thing is we have no cookie waste. Sure, there are some pieces that are a little smaller and a little bigger, but those are snacks for you. Or they're practice if you wanna decorate. So I'm gonna transfer them to the baking sheet with a little space around them, and we're gonna bake them for 10 to 12 minutes at 350. I think this is very key when you're making sugar cookies. Even if it seems like a plain old vanilla cookie, you can still make it taste really good. And one way you can control that is to try to get a little color around the edges. We're gonna watch it like a hawk in the last minute or two so we get the exact color we want. The cookies have baked for 10 to 12 minutes. They got a beautiful golden edge on them, which I love to see because there is so much more flavor in a sugar cookie when you get a little bit of color around it. And now that they're all cool, I'm gonna show you my extremely lazy decorating method. I'm not saying you can't make more effort if you want to, but if you've ever looked at all the steps involved in decorated cookies and just said, well, I'm simply never gonna do that, I'd like to show you how easy it can be. So what I'm starting with is this is just a simple royal icing. You can make it with meringue powder, egg white powder, or an egg white that's been pasteurized and powdered sugar. And you mix it up and you're looking for a certain kind of consistency depending on what you're gonna do with it. Here, I've got a looser consistency because the first thing I'm going to do with these cookies is I am not gonna pipe it. I'm not gonna like frost it on. I am simply going to dip them. So we're just gonna go like this. I just skimmed off a little bit of the excess dripping down and this is a really cool, easy way of creating a basic cookie. And from here, you can do innumerable things with it. I'm gonna dip the rest of these cookies and I'm gonna show you some cool ways to finish it when you're done. We've dipped all the cookies and they are drying. You can kind of rush this along in the fridge if depending on what you wanna to do to it next, but we're just gonna let them dry out for a bit. And I wanna show you that I can use this same bowl of icing that I used for dipping when it was a little bit thinner. And just by adding a little bit more powdered sugar to it, I can make a thicker icing that you can pipe with. Now, I know I promised you that we were not gonna be fussing with piping bags and we're not. We're gonna use the sandwich bag. So the dipping consistency, I would describe it like Elmer's glue, that first one. I don't know if that's a very appealing thing or does it just sound like childhood? The thicker one, we're looking for something that holds its shape a little bit more. It's a little bit more of a paste. And I am just dropping it in a sandwich bag, pulling up the sides, and I'm gonna push it into the corner I'm just going to snip off the tiniest piece of corner. Not a lot. You can do anything you want with these cookies. Like you can have fun with it. I'm just gonna make a little squiggle. Here, I might make a little lines this way. You can write a name on it. You can draw any kind of picture you want. And it holds its shape on top. And you didn't have to really make anything new. You just used the same frosting and played with it. Here, I'm gonna try some dots. Before these set, I wanna show you that I'm just using a mixture of just different kinds of white sprinkles that I have, white and silvery ones, and decorating them. You wanna put these on before it gets dry, which happens pretty fast. Okay, obviously I'm having so much fun, I don't wanna stop, but I have a whole bunch that I made earlier, and I'm gonna show you how they look when they're totally done and all set up. We just made these cookies, cold butter, 
quick dough, quick chill, quick bake, quick decoration, and even somebody like me who absolutely does not have the patience to make things look super cute, I feel like these these do look pretty cute, like for a non-professional. And the best part is they actually taste delicious because there's butter, there's salt, there's vanilla, and they're freshly baked, and they've got that nice golden color that gives them so much flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us, we think we don't like sugar cookies because they usually taste plasticky, you know, like they're full of food dye and they've been made to have a long shelf life. And I forget that when you make them yourself from a good recipe, they taste amazing. I mean, I'm a little biased, but I think they taste amazing. I hope you like the recipe. I hope you subscribe because we have so many more good recipes coming this season and they've all been chosen by you. They are all recipes that you told me you wanted to see me demo and I can't wait to show them to you. Bye. Great cookies now.